Mental intimidation is very much in the fabric of boxing. Some fights are won and lost before competitors enter the ring. The often quiet Sony Liston had Floyd Patterson's number well before they met for the world heavyweight title. Michael Spinks' heavyweight run came to a screeching halt when he met Kid Dynamite at the peak of his career. We'll look at the story and career of a more obscure heavyweight with a simple yet menacing nickname, Violent Elmer Ray. Ray was also referred to as Bearcat Ray. Elmer Ray was born on March 3, 1911 in Hastings, Florida. Violent Elmer Ray made his boxing debut on Halloween night, October 31, 1933. A key note here early is that Ray ranked 44th on Ring Magazine's Top 100 Punchers of All Time based on a 2003 ranking. This would allow him to stand out in a crowded 30s and 40s heavyweight era deep with talent. Ray's greatest fights and rivals essentially sum up his career. Violent Ray's greatest rival was a fighter by the name of Bearcat Obi Walker. Walker is a former colored world heavyweight champion having picked up the title in 1933 by defeating the Leaperville shadow George Godfrey. Walker finished his career with a record of 95 victories, 18 losses, 7 draws, 64 of his wins came via knockout. He had four no decisions and three no contests. Elmer Ray and Obi Walker would face each other on 14 separate occasions. Violent Ray would go 7-4-2 and two with one no contest. Their first fight, which took place on January 19, 1937, ended in a 10-round draw. Due to heavy rain, the ring conditions that night saw each fighter slipping and sliding to gain footing unable to get off their offense. The referee and judges called the fight a draw, while most fans in attendance felt Violent Ray deserved the nod. With this being early in his career, Ray would subsequently lose twice, draw one other time, and have one no contest with Obi Walker for the remainder of 1937. Violent Ray would open up 1938 with a 10-round points victory over Walker on April 27. The tide would turn back to Obi Walker towards the end of 1938. Bearcat Obi would outpoint Violent Ray over 10 rounds on September 15. On October 3rd, the two men would face off in Atlanta, Georgia. Bearcat Obi weighed in at 240 pounds, while Violent Ray came in at precisely 200 pounds. The fight started fast-paced with Violent Ray laying into Bearcat Obi with hard punches, dropping him in the third round with the hard left hook. Walker would take over from there and dish out sustained punishment, busting up Ray in the sixth, forcing Ray to give in and a referee to stop the fight. Coincidentally, Violent Ray would start to move into the prime of his career and the October 3rd, 1938 loss to Bearcat Obi Walker would be his last loss in their rivalry. Ray would defeat Walker via a 10-round decision on May 23rd, 1939. This led to an April 13th matchup where Elmer Ray dominated Walker over 10 rounds in what was his most clear-cut victory since the two rivals had first faced off. No questions were asked after the victory about who was the better man. Ray would face Walker four additional times between the remainder of 1939 and 1941, winning decisions and closing the chapter on one of boxing's underrated rivalries. In a contest brokered by promoter Clive Roby on May 19, 1938, Violent El Murray stepped into the ring with one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time, former world light heavyweight champion John Henry Lewis. Ray was 28 fights into his career, while the veteran Lewis had 112 bouts of experience, a considerable gap in boxing. John Henry Lewis finished his career with a record of 101 wins, 11 losses, and 5 draws. 57 of his wins were via knockout. Ray outweighed Lewis 193 to 182. The big punching Ray couldn't overcome the experience gap and while game, it would be John Henry Lewis who came out on top, knocking out Violent Ray in the 12th round of their 15 round contest. 
an emphatic statement by one of the most underrated light heavyweights in the history of the sport. One of Violent Ray's other major rivals was Arnold Raymond Cream, better known to the world as Jersey Joe Walcott, the former world heavyweight champion. Walcott is one of the great heavyweights with his own unique style. His ability to pivot and shift in seamless motion made him stand out from many of his peers in history. Jersey Joe Walcott finished his career with a record of 49 wins, 20 losses, and one draw. 31 of his wins were via knockout. He was also known to be one of the great older fighters in the sport. Violent Ray and Jersey Joe Walcott would first meet on September 25th, 1937 at Rockland Palace, New York. A hard right to the chin from Jersey Joe Walcott sent Violent Ray down and out in the third of a scheduled six-round contest. Nearly ten years would pass before Ray and Walcott stepped in the ring for a return bout. The fight occurred on November 15, 1946 at the famed Madison Square Garden in New York City. The two men would fight fairly even over the 10 round contest. In the end, Ray would win a split decision over Jersey Joe Walcott. This immediately made him a contender of note in the division. Quoted after the fight, Violent Ray's manager, Tommy O'Loughlin, stated, I told you, I had a good fighter. You'll all laugh, but I tell you, I've got the guy who will beat Joe Lewis. Violent Ray and Jersey Joe would meet for a final time on March 4, 1947. A reported fight with then world heavyweight champion, the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis was at stake. Those who follow the sport know Lewis and Walcott would face off multiple times. But for this fight, Walcott used his patented boxing shuffle style to outpoint Violent Ray over 10 rounds, dropping him in the third round, which became a deciding factor for the judges. Violent Elmer Ray's finest opponent may have been the Cincinnati Cobra Ezert Charles. Charles finished his career with 95 victories, 25 losses, and one draw. 52 of his victories were via knockout. The two first met on July 25, 1947 at the Madison Square Garden in New York. The contest was scheduled for 10 rounds. The fight turned out to be a close affair with each man having their moments. Violent Ray's best rounds during the fight were the 7th and 9th, where he was able to muster up enough of an offensive to force Charles to hold repeatedly. This partly allowed him to gain a slight edge with two of the judges scoring in his favor 6 rounds to 4. The third judge had it 8 rounds to 2 in favor of Charles. It is reported that the crowd of 8,290 fans let it be known that they felt Ezra Charles deserved the nod. The Cincinnati Cobra would get a chance to right the ship on May 7, 1948 when the two met in a return bout, this time a 10-rounder in Chicago, Illinois. Two months prior, Charles had defeated Sam Baruti, a 20-year-old light heavyweight who never regained consciousness and died after being knocked out by Charles in the 10th round. Interestingly enough, the outcome was very similar to one of Baruti's opponents who died under the same circumstance mere months prior. Charles nearly quit the sport. Nonetheless, after encouragement from many, including Baruti's family, Violent Ray would be Charles' next opponent. A late surge in the first fight allowed Ray to gain the edge, but the tides would turn and be reversed more dramatically in this contest. After a lukewarm first half to the fight, Charles would start to dominate in rounds 8 and 9. After constant pressure throughout the 8th, in the ninth round, Charles landed a looping right hand that ended Violent Ray's night and any hope he had of gaining a world heavyweight title shot. Ezra Charles weighed in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds in both of his fights with Violent Ray, while Ray weighed 194 and 192 respectively. Ray was the number two ranked heavyweight in the world at the time. Violent Elmer Ray finished his career with a record of 96 victories, 23 losses, and 11 draws. 69 of his wins were via knockout. He had two no decisions and three no contests. Ray is one of the greatest fighters to never get a shot at a world title. There were points in his career in which he seemed poised to be next in line, 
but another great fighter would derail those chances. The fight he most wanted was one with Joe Lewis. Ray would have his last official fight on May 8th, 1949. As fate would have it, Elmer Ray would finally get an opportunity in the ring with Joe Lewis on March 14, 1949 in the form of a six-round exhibition. Past his prime and no longer the same fighter, Ray would be dropped by Lewis as the third round ended. With that, so did the hope of Ray continuing his career as he retired on his stool at the start of the fourth. Despite a lack of mainstream acclaim these days, violent El Murray undoubtedly cemented his legacy as one of the greatest boxers to ever lace up the gloves. And those familiar with the sport know that nicknames are seldom given, though most often earned. May Ray forever remain violent. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.